turn to Luke chapter 2. We're going to, we're going to be in Luke. Uh, actually, we're probably going to be in Luke chapter 2 for the next several weeks. There are several things the Lord's laid on my heart uh, from this passage right here. There's no place better we could go when you're looking at Christmas and uh, the Christmas story and the things we can learn from that. So the, the title of our message this morning is simply Christmas Chaos. And we'll, we'll launch off of that in just a moment. I do want to thank our, our worship team. Amen. Uh, they just, they, they just, they put a lot of work in and uh, I, I love the fact that they, they lead us quality, it's quality, you know, it's quality what they're doing, but they're not up here putting on a show. That's not the heart of our worship team. They're up here to lead us in worship and, and, uh, and, and, it's, and we engage and we enter the throne room of our, of our almighty God and worship him. You know, they're, they're leading us in that, and they spend a lot of time in preparation for that. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for those in the back in our sound booth that do the live stream, that do the sound, that do the, the slides, the video, all, everything that goes on from back there. And uh, they, make, they make things work very smoothly. So I thank you all back there for what you do as well. So just um, very grateful for them. I don't know if you noticed we, have a, we had a new addition to our... Um, our ensemble this morning, right? I don't know if y'all, but I don't know if you heard. I think I think Levi was singing harmony this morning. I think he, I, he is a vocal young man. He is he makes lots of noises, and uh, uh, it's amazing. So I, I think he may have been up here harmonizing this morning. He might have caught a little bit of that, but uh, that's amazing. All right. Well, let's um. Let's look to the Word of God. I know Aaron's prayed, but I want to. I want to pray. My, my heart just needs to be settled this morning, and um, and uh, as we get started, Father, again, we we are thankful for this time, and Lord, now as we look to Your Word, I, I just ask, Father, for a calmness and a stillness in my heart, clarity in my thoughts and in my speech, and uh, Lord, uh, I do believe that the words You've given us this morning. I know it's helped me already. Uh, in focusing this time around Christmas and all that's going on, I pray God you'll use it in each one of our hearts today. And whatever the need is for each one, God, will use it to uh, to help us to focus on you in this Christmas season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Christmas chaos. I just want to read. I'm going to begin by reading here. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 14 in Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child." And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now, let me just tell you, my kids hate me. And you're going, that's a weird thing to say right there. Well, let me explain. It, it, it's, not, it, it's not so much that my kids hate me, but they hate me at Christmas when they ask me what I want for Christmas. Because my response to them is always this. It has been for years, and I don't know when this started, but it's been going for years now. When they ask what I want for Christmas, my response is peace on earth, goodwill toward men. That's what I tell them. And, and that may sound corny. It may sound, but I mean, that's, that's, what I, that's what I would love. I'd love for there to be real peace on earth and goodwill toward men. I want that. 
I don't, I don't need anything else. But the kids are like, you know, Dad, what we mean. And I was, oh, you're right. So, it, look, it drives them crazy, but that's, that's what I'm getting at. Um, Jesus' birth did bring peace, amen? It brought peace. He, he is the prince of peace. He is the ruler of peace. He is peace. And there will be peace on earth, folks. There is going to be a peace on earth. But, but this wasn't a world peace proclamation by the angelic choir. It wasn't that Jesus is born now and now peace will rule on earth, wars will cease and all that. That was not the proclamation the choir made. It was a proclamation that the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, had arrived. Jesus had been born in a lowly manger. Peace had arrived. The one who is peace came and brought peace to any who would have peace. Now, I want peace. Amen? How many of you want peace in your life? Amen? I don't like the chaos and the craziness of, of life. It gets, it, there, there's just things that are rampant in our lives at times. But the word that comes to mind for me is chaos. And we, when, when we get to Christmas, it's certainly Christmas can be a time of chaos. And, 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 and I want his peace all the time, but I certainly want his peace here at Christmas in this wonderful season where there ought to be peace. There ought to be more, more of this gentle spirit and a kind spirit and a patient spirit among folks. And yet we still see that there's not. There, this is a time of year that tends to be chaotic. Anybody raise your hand if you, if you feel that, you sense that. It, that. This is just a chaotic time of year. Some of you understand that. John 14, 27, the Lord tells us, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Lord came. He is the Prince of Peace. He is peace. He came to give us peace, and when he left, he left peace with us. He says, my peace I leave with you. And then beyond that, he sent the Holy Spirit to come, the Comforter. So we have the opportunity to have peace. His peace, his perfect peace is available for us today. Now, there, there are many things that work to steal that peace in our, in our hearts and in our lives. But, folks, we can, regardless of the circumstances that we face in life, we can have peace. It is available. And that's what we want to look at this morning. So let's look at the Christmas story and see what we can learn this morning about, about peace in the face of chaos. Now, there's, a, there's three Chaos creators that I want us to look at this morning. You have your notes there, if you have the outline. Um, the first chaos creator is this. It's change. Change can create a lot of chaos. Now, change can be, it can be unbelievable. I don't believe that this is happening, and, and this is the chain that's coming. But it can also be an inconvenient thing, where change is very inconvenient. It can be an infuriating thing. There's a change in my life that it, it just infuriates us because, because it, 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 you know, so many times if something would happen and we'd be like, man, that makes no sense. That's stupid. I shouldn't have to be doing this, right? So there's a lot of things that change can do in, in bringing about chaos in our lives. It could be a move. It could be a job change, a sickness, uh, a financial loss, a personal loss, a loved one's passing or a relationship change. There's a lot of different changes that can affect our life. And if we allow it, bring chaos into our hearts and into our lives. But here's the first thing. To have peace in the face of change, we must, we must be willing to. We must be willing to be used of the Lord. And that's the first thing that we're going to look at is we have to be willing to be used of the Lord. And let's look to Mary for that. In, in chapter 1 of Luke, verse 26 it says, now in the sixth month of the, uh, uh, the month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David." 
And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have not, no, I have not known a man? Uh, I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. We see the situation right here. There's change. This is an absolute unexpected situation. Mary is there. She's living life. She's engaged to Joseph. She's planning for her wedding. She's thinking about the days to come and starting her marriage and starting a family. And, and just life is really exciting. Everything's going on. And an angel appears to her. Now, I don't know about you. I've never had an angel appear to me. But if an angel appeared to me, I imagine that might bring a little chaos in my life at that moment. And there was fear, and we see that. She was, she was fearful in that moment. But the, but the angel said, Mary, fear not. Fear not. There shouldn't have been fear. He speaks that. But he tells her now, now what he's, what he's telling her is you're going you're gonna to have a child. And Mary's going, oh, well, wait, wait, wait. Now, I'm not naive. I do know where babies come from. And I've not been with a man, so I, 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 there's no way that I could be with child. This is an incredible change that has been brought into her life. This was, she didn't do anything. There was nothing that she did wrong. There may have been things she did right in here. She had found favor with God. She was living a life that was honoring to him, obviously. She found favor with him. He, he was pleased with her. He came, and, and, and now she is going to be with child. This is a great change in her life. There's an opportunity here for there to be much chaos in her life. But look at Mary's response to that type of a change because at that moment, everything in her life changed. The way people looked at her in the days to come was changed. The way her parents looked at her changed. Everything from this point she has to even wonder, will Joseph even still marry me at this point? Everything in her life right there changed. And there could be fear. There could be trembling. There could be all this trepidation. There could be this chaos. But Mary's response in verse 38 is this. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Mary's response was simple. It was, just, it was just, use me, God. Use me for your glory. Whatever you want. Because that word there, that maidservant, she basically just said, Lord, I am your slave. Whatever you want to do in my life is okay. Use me, Lord. Folks, if we would take that attitude with change in our life, and we would say, Lord, I don't understand. Lord, this is going to be painful. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. But Lord, use me for your glory. Amen. Now, the problem is we don't like being used. Anybody here like me? I don't like being used by people. But I love being used by God. I do. And if God can use me, and, and, and so folks, we have to be sensitive to what God is doing in our life. And many times we get upset about a situation when it really is a situation that, look, we've talked about this. Anything that comes in my life, God has either allowed it or he's brought it. Amen? So it doesn't catch him off guard. He's aware of what's going on. So when change comes into our life, these situations that can bring chaos, then we should say, Lord, I'm willing to be used. I'm your slave. Whatever will bring you glory. That was a great response by Mary. Another of these change situations is this. Look at this. And, and here's, here's another way we can face and have peace in our life when we face change is this. And, and B is to be quick to obey the Lord. We should be quick to obey the Lord. Now, I can submit myself and say, Lord, I want to be used of you. But we also need to be quick to obey the Lord. Let's look at Joseph and, and his situation. You can flip back to Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to read starting with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child 
of the Holy Spirit. Now that's change. Jo- Joseph is engaged to Mary. He knows, he knows they have not been together. They're waiting. They're doing the right thing. They are engaged, but they're not yet married. And now it is found that Ma- Mary is found with child. She's found with child. Oh, of the Holy Ghost. Oh, wow, that's convenient. Um, yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, guys, just imagine. Put yourself in Joseph's shoes. This is, this is huge. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and you, there's much that could be said about Joseph and the way he responds to this. He obviously loved Mary. He obviously loved the Lord. He was very patient in this situation. And he, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, because he, he had every right at that point to, 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 to divorce her, to put her aside. He could have made a spectacle of her. In fact, is it could have gone as far as her being stoned to death, being found with child outside of marriage. She could have been stoned to death. This was, a, this was a very difficult situation. But Joseph is a just man. It looks like God found a pretty, cu- pretty, pretty good couple here to, to be the, the, the mother and father on this earth of the Lord Jesus Christ. He, 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 he was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David... Do not be afraid. First things the angel said to Mary, do not be afraid. The first thing he says to Joseph, do not be afraid. Fear is not in this. You should not let fear in this. Do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all that was done... So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now, see his situation. Just like Mary, I mean, here's Joseph. He's engaged. He he can't wait to be married to his love, Mary. Can you, can, guys, if, you, if, if any of us have been married, we know that. He's infatuated. I mean, he's in love. He cannot wait. His, his mind, I can see him as he's working on their house because he would be preparing their home. He's preparing a room on his father's house that would be their room. It's their home. That's where they're going to begin their life together. And I can see him. I can see him as he's, as he's out there working. He's building the house and, and, he's, and he's daydreaming. I can see him, you know, he's sawing on something. He starts just daydreaming. And he's thinking about the day they're married and he's thinking about children he imagines the children running around the yard there and he's doing and then and somebody is you know somebody's working with hey hey joseph joseph what, what? Or, or maybe he sees mary walking through the village he sees her and he's just thinking about those things oh this is what's going on this is leading up to marriage this is real life folks we've been there a lot of you've been there you know that and and now mary is found to be with child now it's, he don't know how to take that child. You're, okay, the Holy Spirit came upon you. The whole, you're pregnant. God, you got God's baby. You want me to believe that? That's where Joseph, he would easily, all, I mean, who in this room? Well, no, I'm not that holy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go, oh yeah, I believe you, Mary. I would think, I would think, Gina? There's change. What a change. Everything in his life changed. And he's like, what do I do? But he loved Mary and he didn't. And as he's thinking on these things, the Holy Spirit of God comes to him and says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to take Mary to be your wife because the child that is in her is of the Holy Ghost. Oh. So the angel speaks, and look what Joseph does. Verse 24, Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took to him his wife. All talk of putting her away quietly went away. All talk of a divorce went away. All talk of shunning her publicly went away. Joseph did what God said. He did what God commanded. He simply, he was quick from that point to obey the Lord. 
So if we say, Lord, use me, there's great peace in that in the midst of chaos. When we say, when we say whatever God commands us to do, when we just say, yes, Lord, and we obey him, there's great peace that comes with that. The third thing here we look to have peace in the face of change, we must exercise faith by trusting the Lord. Now here's another chaos creator. Not only has Mary just found out she's with child, the angels told her that. Joseph finds out that now that she's with child and the angel speaks to him and all of that. Now things seem to be settling down maybe for them. Things around them, I promise you at this point, are chaotic. But there's peace in their hearts because they're obeying God. They're willing to be used of the Lord and they're like, well, whatever comes with this, then that's fine. Look at this. We've got to exercise faith by trusting the Lord. God is sovereign, amen? amen? He's sovereign. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He is everywhere all the time. He knows everything and he's all powerful. Why do we fear? Why would we be worried? There's nothing that gets by God. That, so, so here's the situation now. They, they know that Mary's with child and they're, they're adjusting to this and there's peace and things have settled down a bit. But now there's this census that has been announced. And now, and now they're going to have to travel 60 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. 60 miles. Now they might have a donkey. Uh, I, I don't know how many of you have seen movies that portray that. Riding a donkey is not the most comfortable way to travel. We, we went this weekend to see the, the Chosen movie, and they had Mary sitting on that donkey, and my back hurt. What, it was hurting watching her ride that donkey. And she's like, Joseph, you got to let me get off this thing and walk. And he's like, no, you can't walk. You're with child. So you imagine the 60 miles that they've got to travel. This trip's not easy. It's difficult. It's long. There's no car. They're going to do most of it on foot. Like I said, maybe there's a donkey, but it's a hard trip. It's a long trip. It's a difficult trip. It's slow travel, and Mary's pregnant. At this point, she's, we, we know because they get to Bethlehem, she has the child. So, so it's, it's, it's close. She, she's traveling. She's very pregnant at this point, as though there's any other degree. But she's, and, and, there, and folks, there's no Wawa's. Okay. And we love the Wawa. We love the, the busy bee or whatever. There's none of that. There's nowhere to stop and have clean restrooms and find some food and refreshment. They're in a difficult, this is a hard thing. But listen what they do not do. When you read this, they don't panic. They don't get all upset and, 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 and go, Lord, what are you doing? They don't, they don't allow this circumstance to create a crisis in their lives. They trust that God knew. Because it would be easy to go, Lord, why would you do this right now? You knew there was going to be a census. You knew we were going to have to travel. Why, why not after? Why not later? Why couldn't it be another time? They don't do that. They trust that God knew. They trust that God had a plan. They, they, they didn't think that his timing was off. I mean, he's, never, he's never caught off guard. He's never caught by surprise in these things. So they trust his timing. They trust his plan. And they trust his protection. Look, if we want to have peace in the face of change, we trust God. And we exercise our faith by trusting Him. God has a plan, folks. And for them, this was part of that plan. And they knew that, that, that He could and that He would keep His word. He had told them what was going to happen. They trusted Him. Him. They exercised faith and they didn't allow a change, a situation in their life that could have been very chaotic, very problem causing. They didn't allow it to become that. They trusted God in the midst of that. Folks, if, if we'll just submit ourselves to so Lord, I, I'm, I'm your slave. Do what you want with me. I want to be used of you. Whatever that means, whatever that looks like, however that goes, I, I want to be used of you, Lord. The, the, you know what? That will bring peace in our life. When God tells us to do something, we read it in his word. We, 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 we know from the Lord this is what he's commanded us to do. He, he, he prompts us in life. And there are situations where I, I'm not one to say, well, the Lord spoke to me. All to me. Look, the Lord speaks to us through his word. He speaks through his word. But then you know what? He can work circumstances in our life that can confirm things. When it makes it clear, when God says do something, when he commands us, we need to just say, yes, Lord. Right. Just get up and obey. When we make ourselves available, used, we, we say, yes, Lord. And then you know what? We just exercise faith by trusting God. 
When we do those things, there's great peace in that. There's a lot of change that can come about this time of year. It doesn't always seem like the most inconvenient time is when when change happens, when these things happen. I I, I think about John back there. About a year ago now, uh, his job situation changed. This is a little over a year ago, wasn't it, John? Could have been a very chaotic time in their life. It could have brought chaos. But what I watched as I watched John was John walked by faith. He trusted God in that situation. And he said, Lord, if this is your plan, then, then I just have to believe you. This didn't catch you out. All these things. And there was peace in their life. It didn't bring, they didn't allow it to bring chaos in their life. And that's when we exercise these things. Chaos creator number two is this. Um, people. People. Anybody, anybody testify to that? Anybody raise your hand to that? Amen. People, people can be chaos creators. Um, so are there people in, in your life uh, that create chaos in your life? Has, has there ever been that? Brent, Brent is the chaos creator. Yeah, I get that. I get that. For multiple people. Um, people can. They can create. So there's a couple in this story we see. You know, Caesar Augustus was a chaos creator. And he, and he did it in many people's lives. But for Mary and Joseph here, we see in this story, he, he, created, he could have created the chaos for them. And I already mentioned there's this census. they got to travel 60 miles on foot to pay taxes. You know, this isn't, this isn't oh, hey, man, we're going to get to spend the holidays with family. This is awesome. That's not what this was. And it wasn't, hey, you know what? you got a, you got a three-month vacation. It'll take you that long to get there and back. Um, so you got a three-month vacation. That wasn't what this was. This was you got to travel 60 miles. You got to forget everything that's going on back home because he's, remember, he's still building a house. He's still got a job. He's still got a family coming up to support all this going on. Now it's put on hold to do what? To walk 60 miles to pay taxes. So Caesar Augusta created some, some chaos, so potentially created chaos there. You know, when they get there, uh, the innkeeper, the innkeeper creates some chaos in their life. Uh, you know, just to ask you, do you, you all think the same way I do of him as, you know, he's kind of a cold-hearted person. Anybody, anybody think that way? Just me? Nobody? I think you kind of hope, except, except for one problem. There's no, there's no innkeeper ever mentioned in Scripture. You know, it's, it's interesting. We've got this picture of the nativity and we got them knocking on the door and the innkeeper comes and I don't care if you had a reservation. But, but wait, we had a reservation. Well, well, so what about your reservation? Well, you didn't keep the reservation. We made a reservation. Well, somebody else paid more for your room so you can't stay and you're out. Well, that's what we picture, right? There's no room in the inn. You're out. You're out. We don't, we don't, the, the scriptures never tell us there's actually an innkeeper. It never says that the innkeeper sent them away. It just says there's no room in the inn. So we draw all these things out. But if there was an innkeeper, he was kind of cold hearted. And, and, and he creates a, a sense of chaos because I don't know what the situation was here. Maybe, look, family, maybe the problem with, you know, we could have some, some chaos with family because here's Joseph going back to Bethlehem because why? His lineage was from Bethlehem. He had to go. He had family in Bethlehem. Why is he looking to the inn for a place to stay? It might be that because of their situation, the family in Bethlehem said, no, y'all aren't staying with us. No, we know your situation. I don't know, but maybe family created the situation that sent them to the inn, and now there's everybody's brothers coming to Bethlehem because Joseph's not the only one that has to come and register. It's everybody that that's where their family is from. They go and register and pay their taxes. So the innkeeper, the family... You know, maybe friends were a problem. I, I can imagine Mary, when, when word got out that, have you heard? Mary, Mary's pregnant. And the chaos those friends could create as they shun her, as they talk about her, as they mock her, as they look at her and laugh in the community. There's, there's a potential for a lot of chaos creating right there. And maybe coworkers, as Joseph, you know, he's on the job, and they would have maybe ridiculed him or made fun of him. And, and, and you know what? I can't believe, Joseph, that, that girl did that to you. And man, what kind of man are you? What kind of man are you? You know, you're not, you ought to put her aside in a heartbeat. I ought to have had her dragged out in the street, rah, 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 all that. So there's people. Got people in your life that can create chaos? There's, there, there's a lot of that. 
Now, then you've got Herod. So some time passes and Jesus is no longer a baby in a manger, but he's a young child at this point. And, and we know about the, the wise men that come and, and, and Herod meets with them. And Herod finds out about the king, this one who's born king of the Jews. And he plots to kill all the boys in Bethlehem up to two years of age. That creates some chaos. Here's a man plotting to kill your child. This is a man who's creating some chaos. So how do we deal with these situations and, and with people who are potential chaos creators? Here's what we do. We follow the Lord's instructions. We follow the Lord's instructions. Now, the Lord sent word to Joseph to take Mary and Jesus and to flee to Egypt. And, and that was the instruction he gave. Now, that doesn't mean that we should just flee from every problem person in our life. That's not what the Lord is saying right here. He gave specific instruction for them. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you got someone plotting to kill your child, flee. Okay? Flee. But that's not the, the point, that the principle that comes from this message. Um, they were instructed to do that, and we are to follow the Lord's instructions. So how do we deal with chaos-causing people? In our lives. How at these holidays, when we get together, and I can't avoid being around Sister Susie or, or Aunt Madge or you know, whatever person it is, or my boss, or the, the atheist that I work with, and they, they have a problem with me putting a putting a manger scene on my desk at work, or whatever. There's a lot of chaos causing people in our lives. So how do we do that? Well, God's instruction, He gives us just here's some basic things. You know, the Lord says, forgive. The Word of God tells us forgive, Matthew 18, 35. So my heavenly Father will also uh, will, uh, will, will do to, to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. So the instruction God gives us is to forgive. You know, it's a great way to bring, bring peace in a season of chaos is forgiving those problem people in our lives, those chaos crossers. Or another way is, is to be patient. 1 Thessalonians 5.14, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. You know, it may be that, that our patience will model Christ in their life. So we should be patient with all. Another way is to, to seek peace. Romans 12.18 says, If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably, with all men. Sometimes people say things, these chaos creators in our life. Now let me just say this. If you don't have a chaos creator in, in, in your job or your neighborhood or your family, it may be you. <laughs> if you can't identify that chaos creator, just saying, it might be you. But here's a way, here's what happens is a lot of times the problems we have with people are the interpersonal relationship. It's the communication. It's the conversation. It's the things they say. And a lot of times people say things that they seek to provoke you. Why don't we seek peace? If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. And, and one way, another way we can do that is when we speak peaceably, Proverbs 15, 1 says, a soft answer turns away wrath. But a harsh word stirs up anger. You know, there's a lot of ways. You know, I could come up here and, and on a Sunday morning, I could say good morning in about four different ways and I could get a different response with each one. You can get up in the morning and, uh, and say good morning or you can get up and just say morning. Was it not a good morning? Morning. Right? Good morning. Good morning, Brent. Good morning, Brent. Good morning. I mean, there's a lot. It's the way we say things. A soft word, a soft answer turns away wrath. Another thing is just having a good attitude. Great way to get through this holiday season. Man, we're, we're, we're going to be around a lot of people, a lot of different things going on. There are folks that are going to try to stir you up is have a good attitude. Philippians 4, 8, how do I do that? How do I have a good attitude? Finally, brethren, whatsoever, whatever things are true, Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. It's what we think on. 
It's where we, our mind, where, we, where do we spend our mind thinking on? Do we meditate on the Word of God or do, we, or do we dwell on that problem person? So that when we see that problem person, we're already up to here with them. And they say something and poof. Maybe, maybe if we meditate on the right things, then the pressure comes down. And the attitude changes. Folks, I'm preaching to me. I'm preaching to me more than I'm preaching to you this morning. These are things we can do with problem people. So if God says do, do something, do it. If God says go somewhere, go there. If he says stop, he's, then stop. Whatever God instructs us to do. And the instructions are here in his word. Amen? Amen. They're there. Everything we need is there in his word. He's provided that. And so all we have to do is get in the word and live by the word, obey his word, be, be, respond to, to what he's given us in instruction, and do those things, and it'll bring peace in our life. Chaos creator number three is need. You know, this is, this is, a, this is a time of year where for a lot of people, there's not disposable income. Maybe there's not extra in the budget right now. And it, it's, it's need is going to create chaos. It creates a tension that uh, I, I can remember many a Christmas where we're trying to figure out what can we do? What do we have? How much can, how much can we spend on the kids? Oh, we got to buy them a gift too. We got to go see the cousins. They got to each have a gift. <laughs> they don't need anything. You know, we get caught up in that, right? And, and that's part of the season. And so there's a lot of different things that can bring need. And it may be that we're just we're, we're already struggling. And, and here we are in December and the car breaks down. We get a flat tire. We got an unexpected bill. We get a, we get a ticket for run, rolling through a, a, a stop sign in our neighborhood. And we didn't see that coming. I'm not saying I did that, but <laughs> I'm just saying these unexpected things come and it creates, can create a need, can create, I did do it. <laughs> Confessing a lot this morning. Those things, these things of need, need can create chaos in our life, potentially. So let's look at this, this unusual, these unusual circumstances. Now, Mary and Joseph, they travel to Bethlehem and they're in need of a place to stay. The inn is full. There's nowhere for them to stay. And, 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 and so Bethlehem's just scurrying with people. Where are we going to stay? The family's not available. They won't let us stay there. They're full. Whatever. The inn is full. What are we going to do? Mary's going, oh, Joseph. <laughs> Joseph's going, oh, God, help me. And look what happens. God provides a place. It's a stable, but it's out of the weather. And they were able to have a place where she could go and give birth to Jesus. And there's a manger there. It's a feeding trough. And it makes a bed for, for Christ to lie in that manger. You know, when there's unusual circumstances like that, what we've got to look, do is look for the unusual provision that God will provide. God provided a stable and he provided the manger for the newborn Christ child. There was, when, the, when we have those needs in our life, God works in unusual ways. And we go, wow, that's, he's not ever done that before. Yeah, because he does things in unusual ways. And what's neat about that part is that the angel had announced that God knew what was going to happen there. Now, if, if baby Jesus is born in a hotel somewhere, now I'm going to put this in 2021. He's in a hotel somewhere and there's 300 rooms. How are they? They're going to have a hard time finding Jesus. Even in that day, if there's some type of an inn, they might have had a little difficulty as the shepherds come looking for Jesus. And, and they go into a stable. He's born in a manger. The angel now declares to the shepherds that the Savior has been born. And you'll find him wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a man manger. That's pretty specific. They know exactly what they're looking for. And God made it not only he did he provide this unusual provision but he made it very easy for the shepherds to find Jesus and to come and to worship him. You know what? I think there's a principle there that the Lord has made it easy for us to find him. It's not difficult to find the Lord. 
He, he's right there. The other thing is this, unforeseen expense. So God told Joseph and Mary to take young Jesus and to flee to Egypt. Now, now I don't know how old Jesus was there. I don't know if he was six months old. I don't know if he was almost two. He's under two. We can gauge that from the story, but we know he's no longer an infant. He, he's a young child. The scripture says he's a young child. So the, that's another misconception of the nativity. The wise men don't show up the night Jesus is born. It's sometime later. But look at this. God says, here's what now, the, 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 they've already come. They're on the way for a long time. God's working this. They come, the wise men come, they meet with Herod, and Herod's wanting to know about this, this child that's been born king of the Jews. He wants to know. Now, when y'all go find him, you come back and bring word to me so I can go worship him also. No, he don't want to worship. He wants to go slay this child. That's what Herod wants to do. So, so here, here's the situation. And now, after the wise men leave, what did they do when they showed up? They worshiped Jesus. And they open gifts and present to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. All of these things were valuable things. There's an unforeseen expense. And look how God did the unexpected and the unique in providing the need. Because they leave, God says, Joseph, get up, pack up, take Mary and the baby Jesus, and you guys flee to Egypt because Herod is going to come try to kill Jesus. There's a need they didn't even know about. There's a need that the wise men didn't know about. But God knew about it. And God, in this unexpected and unique way, provided the funding they needed to take a trip. Who's got the money to take off to Egypt? We're just getting by, Lord. How can we go to Egypt? He provided. Amen. We got to look. We got to look. So we look, here's what we do. When there's need in our lives, here's how we avoid the chaos, and here's how we have peace in our life. We look for his provision in the unusual, the unexpected, the unexpected and in the unique. The Lord's promised to provide our need, and if it's a need, he's going to meet it. Let's look. Let's be looking for those, those ways. Now, as I get ready to wrap this up, Pastor Aaron, you can, you can come, your, your team can come. The, the greatest need that we've ever had is the need for a Savior. And so we, we see the unusual provision. We see the unexpected provision. We see the unique provision. But the greatest of the provisions is this unimaginable provision that God provided. I think of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15 that says, Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. See, we had a need. And that need was for a Savior. The whole story of Christmas, folks, it's not about a baby born in a manger. It's about a Savior who was born into this world, who would live a sinless life, who would go to the cross of Calvary and would be nailed to that cross and would take our sin, the sin of the whole world upon him. The Bible says he became our sin. And he would pay the penalty of our sin in our place. That's the story of Christmas. And so we have this unimaginable provision that God became man, Emmanuel, God with us, so that he could pay the penalty of our sin. He would die and rise again so that we, through a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, could be reconciled to God Almighty. The greatest provision ever made was for salvation for man. It cost God everything in sending his son Jesus. That's what Christmas is about. And the greatest need we have, and I pray the testimony of every person in this room this morning, is that you have, you, have, you have confessed your sin to God. You have repented and turned from trying to do it your way, and you've turned to Jesus Christ, and you've called upon the name of the Lord, and you've received that gift that He offers to you of salvation. But if not, if you've never done that, I pray today would be the day that you would come to the Lord.
You have a need. You may not even realize it before you walked in this room today. But your need is to be born again. To be born spiritually. And God has already provided for that. Jesus has already done everything that needs to be done. And he calls you today to come to him and to confess your sin and to receive the gift that he offers you of eternal life. We can have peace with God. Let me say it this way. We can have the peace of God. We can have that peace that passes all understanding. And as a child of God, he's given us everything we need to have peace in this chaotic time. Not just this time of year, but all year round. We don't have to live in chaos. We don't have to have that peace stolen. We have peace available to us always as a child of God. But before you can have the peace of God, you've got to have peace with God. That comes through salvation. So today, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, we're going to stand in a moment. We're going to sing. We'll have a time of reflection and response. If this morning you've never called upon the name of the Lord, and this morning God's burdened your heart, revealed to you your need to be born again, I'm going to invite you to just step out, come down here. I'll meet you. I'll take the scriptures and show you, walk you right through the plan of salvation and introduce you to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Christian, maybe you've been battling with a little chaos. Maybe some of these things have stolen your peace. We have the answers. We don't have to live in chaos. We can have that peace. Whatever the Lord's speaking to your heart about today, whatever it is you need to do, if it's just following Him, if it's just surrendering, saying, Lord, use me, whatever, whatever it is that you need to do this morning, I invite you to respond to what God's doing in your heart today. Father, thank you for your word. I thank you for the depth. Lord, in just a few verses in two books, we have such depth of clarity uh, 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 surrounding the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's so many truths that are found right there in that story. So many layers of truth. We thank you for that, Lord. And we thank you for the truths we have that you've provided us in your word. This morning, as we've looked to your word, I pray, God, that you will bring a spirit of peace in our hearts and lives. Help us to obey you, to, to respond to your instruction, that we would submit ourselves to you, Lord, that we would understand that, God, you are sovereign. You are at work in our lives all the time. We don't have to fret and fear and, and be anxious about circumstances. God, you've got it in your hand. May we just submit ourselves to you and receive that peace, Lord, that you left with us this morning. And as we go over the next few weeks through this Christmas season, busy time, I pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding will rule in our hearts and our minds and our bodies through the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, if there's one that needs salvation this morning, I pray today would be that day. Bless now in this invitation in Jesus' name.